Welcome friends, in this one we're going to find the following sum. So the summation is going to go from n equals 1 to positive infinity. And then the term will be 1 over n times n plus 1. We're going to do this by treating it like a telescoping series. That means you have to first break up this expression using partial fractions. So what does that look like? You're going to have 1 over n times n plus 1. And you're going to assume that this can be written in the following form. a over n plus b divided by n plus 1. You can do that because, remember, this is just a rational expression. So you can assume that it came from adding, for example, two other rational expressions, like a over n and then b over n plus 1. Now we just have to find the values of a and b. You can do that by multiplying everything by n times n plus 1, like this. And then in this position, you would have the following, 1 over n times n plus 1. And on the right side, you have a over n, and then you would multiply by n times n plus 1. And then plus b divided by n plus 1 times n times n plus 1, this way. On the left side, those pieces will cancel off. In other words, look, this n here will cancel with this n on the bottom right here. So this will cancel with this n plus 1. That's going to leave only a 1 on the left side. But on the right side, what will you have? You get a cancel. So you see this n here will cancel with that n. That means you're going to have 1 is equal to a times n plus 1. Plus, for the other one, well, this n plus 1 will cancel with that n plus 1, which means it's going to leave you in this position, b times n only. For what you see on the screen to be true now, it has to be the case that is true for every value of n that you choose. So you choose the convenient values of n. In other words, by convenient, that means you make either the term with a or the term with b disappear. So n would be equal to the following then. I would say n is equal to 0 first. When you do that, you're going to have the following. 1 is equal to a and then 0 plus 1 plus b times 0. So now it's going to give you here 1 is equal to a times 1. In other words, that's just a. a is equal to 1. Now you choose, for example, n equals negative 1. Why am I choosing n equals negative 1? Because, take a look, 1 would be then equal to a times negative 1 plus 1 plus b times negative 1. The benefit is, now I have 1 is equal to a times 0 minus b, essentially, because it's b times negative 1, which is negative b. And this is going to be then 1 is equal to negative b. Divide through by negative 1. So b would be equal to negative 1. What this says as a result is the following. Now go back to the summation across the top there. It's going to be the following. Then the sum as then it goes from 1 to infinity. And you can rewrite this as follows. You can say 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Once it's written in this form, then you can the following next. You're going to set up the partial sum here. So what does that mean? You're going to write s sub k. That is the kth partial sum. That is what you get from adding up to k. And then you're going to do the following. Summation as n goes from 1 not to infinity but to k. When you deal with telescoping series you work pretty hard creating an expression whose limit you can take and the value of that limit then becomes the value of the sum. So n is going to go from 1 to positive k. And this is down to kth partial sum. And then in here, you're going to put the following. Just put this expression in there. That part doesn't change. Now what you need to do is you need to write this out a little bit. 1 over 1 minus 1 over 2 first. So why am I doing this? You see, this corresponds to plugging in n equals positive 1 right here. Right. So if you replace n with 1, you would have 1 over 1 for the first term. And when n is 1, it's 1 over 1 plus 1, which is 1 over 2. And then you do it again. So plus the next combination. That would be essentially 1 divided by 2. n is 2 now. Minus 1 divided by 2 plus 1, which is 3. So this corresponds to plugging in right here. n equals positive 2. Do it a couple more times. You want to see a pattern very clearly. The next one would then be 1 divided by 3 and then minus 1 divided by 3 plus 1, which is 4. This way. And then plus dot 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 and then plus. Let me put this in here actually. This is going to say n is equal to 3. At the very end, to see the pattern, look. You see, when I look at this, I can tell that this one half will cancel with this one half when I add up. Because 1 is negative, 1 is positive. 
I see that this one third will cancel with this negative one third because one is positive and one is negative. So far, it would seem to leave one over one, which is just one. At the very end, you're going to plug in the following. You're going to plug in n is equal to k minus 1. What would that look like? First of all, I need to move this over so it fits better. Give me a second here. There we are. So this would be the following then. You would have here 1 divided by, and in that position, you would have k, and then you would have minus, and be careful. You see, this is the previous value. So this is not k, it's k minus 1. And in this position, you would have. Remember, it's always whatever n is. So when n has the value k minus 1, look carefully where it's highlighted. This would be k minus 1 plus 1, which is k. So this would be now k in that position. And lastly, for the very last one, n would have the value k. This would give you in this position, therefore, the following. You would have 1 divided by k, and then minus 1 divided by k plus 1. Notice the following, that this here, this positive 1 over k cancels with the negative 1 over k. This one right here, that has 1 over k minus 1, it doesn't seem like it's canceling with anything, but that's not true. That's only because we're not showing the previous terms in the pattern. It's not possible, obviously, to show infinitely many terms. So you just have to believe, so to speak, that this would cancel with a term in the previous step that is not shown on the screen. Okay, so it's a bit of faith, I suppose. <laughs> going down below here, I'm going to have the following left over. That S sub K is just equal to the following. Take the first one that is left over, which is 1 over 1. That doesn't cancel with anything. With the last piece that is left over, which is negative 1 over K plus 1. What we can do now is simply do this. Take the limit as K goes to positive infinity of 1 minus 1 divided by K plus 1. And then from here, you can distribute the limit operator to each piece individually. So it's going to be the limit as k approaches positive infinity of 1 minus the limit as k approaches positive infinity of 1 divided by k plus 1. Now the limit of the first one there is just equal to 1. The limit of the second one is equal to 0. Remember the reason is when k goes to infinity over here where I've highlighted then k plus 1 goes to infinity which means that the ratio 1 over that goes to 0. And you just end up with 1 minus 0 which is in other words equal to 1. And what this 1 represents to be interpreted correctly is the following. This is equal to the sum. In other words, it's equal to this right there. So now we know the value of the entire infinite series. And that is it. So please leave a like and subscribe. I hope it's been insightful and helpful, friends. I'll see you in the next video.